we are here on a review hearing. We are conducting this through Zoom and we are live streaming. Uh, and Ms. Taylor is making our record. All right, we are uh, having this hearing electronically under a finding of good cause and agreement of the parties. We're all spread out. Okay, then we'll take everybody's announcements. Todd Alvey on behalf of the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services. I'm present ready to proceed, Your Honor. Tim Koval with St. Francis Ministry is here to discuss the case. Your Honor, okay, I've got any, uh, Sorry, I was looking for Mr. Koval because he was in and then he dropped out and I wanted to make sure he was back in, but he is. Go ahead. Uh, Your Honor, Dale Ray for the respondent uh, mother, Marisol Garza. We are present ready. And my client acknowledges that uh, she made a mistake by uh, misspelling Irene's name. It's pronounced Irene just for the course benefit instead of E, Irene. Okay, thank you. Aaron Mullinex, on behalf of the father, he is present and ready. It uh, looks like they're both together, Your Honor, um, but they're both present. Bethany Stevens, on behalf of the children, standing in for Sage Seal. Present ready. Okay, then, um, I guess, Mr. Koval, what do we have new since the court report was filed? I think the court report is is pretty accurate. Um, I did see both Francisco and Marisol, as well as the children, last Tuesday. Um, I guess there's been a change in their transportation. They, they sold their van, and they're trying to get another vehicle uh, running, but... Um, Pretty, pretty much everything is the same as, as it was listed in the court report. All right. And um, mom is still visiting at St. Francis. Of course, dad gets to visit at placement. Um, we're, from what I read, it appears we're making sort of slow progress. Yes, Judge, there has been progress, but it has been slow. Okay. Um, what has actually been completed? Because okay. I, I just want to make sure that parents know exactly what they still need to do. Okay. RBT has been completed for both of them. That was prior to the, the last hearing. Uh, in parenting classes, um, which is through CareNet, Marisol has completed nine parenting classes, which is almost half of the parenting classes that she needs to complete with CareNet. Um, individual counseling, Marisol has completed the initial six. The counselor has not released her that she would like to continue the individual counseling with Marisol, but she did complete the psychosocial and the rest of the initial counseling. Um, anger management with Troy Timmons. Marisol was registered for the September class, but Troy had to cancel that class. So it's been rescheduled for October. Okay. Drug screens. Um, Marisol has tested negative so far on hair follicle, alcohol, and drug UAs. Um, she was a no-show to a test yesterday. Um, I would like the court to order that she submit to drug and alcohol UAs today. There's an appointment at 4 p.m. today um, at Rolling Plains in Wellington. Any uh, explanation for her not being there yesterday? Um, yes, ma'am. If okay. I can. Hang on. Let, on. let Tim on. say it first, and then you'll be able to. Okay. I haven't been able to talk to them since yesterday. Uh, they continue to be difficult to reach because of their phone situation. Uh, they were responsive to me over the past week, but then yesterday, um, the only way I can give them instruction is to text them. And their phone only works when it's connected to a Wi-Fi, which they don't have Wi-Fi at their home. So I did send them uh, a request that they drug test yesterday. I sent it at 8 a.m. and then never heard back from them. Okay, so you you can't definitively say whether or not they got that timely. No, I in fact okay. I texted them later that day and asked them if they. Well, when I when I sent them the initial message, I said please respond that you got this, and they never responded. Okay, all right. Um, so, I would like 
yeah, go I ahead like for the court to order um, you know tests today since we have them here and they can get that message. Um, the WAVE program uh, for Marisol through Family Support Services is not complete yet. Um, there was some intimate partner violence content in the CareNet curriculum, but it was just like one video. Um, she did do that one, but we would want her to do the WAVE program after she completes her CareNet classes. Um, Judge, I believe the parents have fallen. I think they did just fall out. They obviously were somewhere where they had Wi-Fi. Anybody maybe try to text them and see if we get a response. I can try to call them, Judge. Either way, sure. All right, now they are. <coughs> okay, we we stopped. We realized y'all had fallen out, so we we waited. Okay, um, we had been discussing. Uh, the WAVE program um, and that she still needs to do the WAVE program. Moving on to employment. Your Honor, <laughs> I, I hate to interrupt, but they're frozen. The Wi Fi got. Can you hear me okay? Yes, ma'am. Now I can hear you. Okay. Let me make a suggestion that you all turn the camera off. It might help your signal. Okay. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> okay. Can you still hear me all right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, all right. Okay, Mr. Koval, go ahead. Okay, moving on to employment. Marisol says that she's put in applications and hasn't been able to find uh, employment. I haven't been provided with any proof of the applications. Um, housing, um, she remains in a house that doesn't have any utilities turned on. Um, Transportation, as I mentioned earlier, right now or as of last Tuesday, they didn't have a, a running vehicle. They had sold their van. Um, they were working on a car to get it running. Um, the CareNet stuff, she's completed the three gospel uh, videos that CareNet requires before you move on to the other things. Uh, one domestic family violence, one anger management, one depression and suicide, and nine parenting. Uh, moving on on to Francisco. He completed RBT prior to the last hearing. Uh, the parenting with CareNet, he has not completed any of that yet. Um, and once again, they require the three gospel classes um, before he can move on to the parenting. And he's completed two of the three gospel, but he still needs to do that other one before he can move on to the parenting. And there's about 20 of the parenting uh, videos that he would need to do once he starts those. Drug screens, um, he initially refused to test uh, in the first attempt that we had after the last hearing. It was about three weeks after the last hearing. Um, he did test for UA last month, but the testing center overlooked the hair follicle authorization, so he has not done a hair follicle yet. Um, he was a no-show yesterday for a drug UA and a hair follicle. And again, we would like for the court to order him to test today at 4 p.m. Uh, CareNet, as I said, he's done two of the three gospel classes. Um, he's still got 20 parenting classes to do. Um, regarding uh, the visitation, the visitation's been going well, uh, both for Marisol and for Francisco. St. Francis continues to supervise those visits. Um, I would say on Francisco that on going back to drug testing, um, it was clear that his hair had been altered. Uh, he has his hair is black on one side and brown on the other. Uh, so we would ask the court today to order that both parents not alter their hair for the remainder of the case. Okay, thank you. All right, anything else from St. Francis then? All right. Um, well, one more thing, Judge. Um, uh -huh. On visitation, we would ask that when Marisol completes her anger management and we move to visits that are supervised by the placement, that it still be on a set schedule for her. Right now, you'll recall that Francisco is able to visit without restriction, but uh, for Marisol, we would ask that that be on a set schedule, just as it has been, uh, but supervised by the placement. Your Honor, I don't really like that suggestion. 
honestly, just because of I've been doing everything that I have been doing a lot, actually. And I rarely get to see my kids. So, Okay, well, hang on. Hang on, Miss Garza, and we're going to get to all that. So, so Mr. Koval, St. Francis is asking that her visits be moved and placement to supervise those. Yes, just Judge. Like, just like what Dad's been doing, but you want them at set times. Right. No, just we, we believe that she, you know, still needs to, to show emotional regulation, uh, given given the nature of the of the case. And so we think it would be best best interest for it to be along a set schedule. And Francisco can continue to have his visits without restriction. I know what St. Francis wants. All right. Mr. Raby. Um, I don't have any questions of Mr. Koval. All right. Does anybody else have any questions for Mr. Koval? Okay. All right. Mr. Raby, anything then to present today? Yes, Your Honor. I would um, call my client, Marisol Garza. Okay. Uh, Ms. Garza, you're the mother of the two girls, the subject of this suit. Is that right? Yes. Are you asking the court to um, not only lift the restriction that, that your visits be supervised um, by St. Francis and allow them to be supervised by placement, but are you asking for the same um, visitation to the extent that Francisco gets, and that is to um, visit as long as placement's okay with it. Yes. Now, tell the court what exactly you've completed that you feel has helped your, for lack of a better term, emotional outbursts. Well, not only have I been doing CareNet, I've basically been taking extra classes with CareNet. Um, so, tell the, so tell the court what all classes you've taken that you think addresses your situation. Okay, give me one second because I have it all on my email. So I've completed 15 classes for parenting. I've done the screen time in you, depression and suicide, domestic violence, and anger management class. And then... See, I've just been taking on extra classes just to take extra classes because at first I was supposed to do an anger class with um, CareNet and then Tim wanted to, me to do one with Troy, but then I ended up talking to my counselor. So I've been doing, i done my individual counseling and then on top of that, I had asked her if she can also help me with anger management. So I've been getting anger management left and right, really. And how many counseling sessions have you had with your counselor now? Uh, 13 or 14. Okay. And who's your counselor? Yeah. Uh, she also told me that if the judge or you would either like to talk to her, she's more than happy to do that because she says that, because honestly, I'm not even going to lie. Like I actually talk to my counselor more than what I do, Tim. Mm -hmm. So really, Wait, who, who is your counselor, Marisol? Karen Rothwell. Okay. Is she out of Amarillo? No, she's in Childress, Texas. Mm. Okay. You're scheduled to to have uh, what's your class that you're scheduled to have with Tim uh, Troy Timmons? Another anger management. Um, so that'll be your third class to address your anger issues. Is that right? Yes. Or third counselor or person to address your anger issues. Correct. Yes, but Troy when, is just... When is, when is that set to begin, Marisol? Well, there's not a for sure date yet because T Tim hasn't got back with me on that. Okay. Because we discussed that when he last came, which was on Tuesday. But he said that, like, I guess the lady told him that I didn't want to take the class. But really, I just was confused on why it was rescheduled because it was set for September. And so she took that into consideration, thinking that I didn't want to go to the class. But I was just confused confused on why it was changed to October. And so he said he would get back with me on if it's a for sure thing or not. 
So you still intend to, to, to do that class, is that right, with Troy Timmons? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, you heard Tim testify that, or state, I don't think he was under oath. So you heard Tim state that um, he hasn't had any, he hasn't received any proof from you that you've applied for jobs. And I told you to keep that proof, correct? Yes. Can you get that proof to Tim so that way he can put that in his file? Yes. Or get it to me and I will get it to Tim? Yeah, I can. Okay. All right. And then the, the last thing I want to address with you is you heard Mr. Koval testify or state that y'all no show for a drug screen. Tell the court what the what happened with that. So I can only like when I can, I could come to Austin to get Wi-Fi and Tim texted me at one and I didn't get to the Wi-Fi to like three in the afternoon. And then it was already late. And then I was like, OK, well, yeah, now he told me to go test at one. So I, I really didn't know what was going on until I got to Wi-Fi like around 323. And I was like, crap, well, now I'm late. OK, so you understand that the and that's fine. I mean, y'all, y'all's phone situation is spotty at best. Um but you understand that the court in all likelihood is going to order you to hair follicle and UA drug test today. Do you have a problem with that? No, I don't. Okay. And will you be able to, do you have time to do that today? Yeah. Okay. I can make time. I mean, I'm, I'm busy cause I got, I can make time. To, I'm, I got, I'm gonna make time to take the drug test. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Um, that's all I have, Your Honor. I'll pass witness. Do you all have transportation to get to the drug testing today? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. <clears throat> all right. Um, anybody have any questions they want to ask Ms. Garza? I do, Your Honor. Okay. Good, Ms. Ms. Garza. Ms. Garza, um, Mr. Coble test or told the court that y'all had sold your van. Have you purchased? a new vehicle or do you have another working vehicle at this time? No, I have a working vehicle at this time. It's my old one, but yeah, I did. We did sell our van. Okay. And um, do you recall that the court previously ordered that you don't have um, face-to-face visits um, with your children until you complete an anger management class? I'm sorry. Well, let's back up. What kind of visitation are you receiving with your children right now? Ms. Cars, I was talking with you about visitation. Um, is, my understanding is that you get visits that are supervised by St. Francis at this time. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And that it was ordered that you are you have to continue those supervised by St. Francis visits until you complete an anger management course. Is that correct? Yes. And then you're telling me that you have gone to some counseling. You've talked about anger management. You've done some Karenet parenting classes that have talked about anger management. But you have not taken a anger management course at this time. I'm sorry, you said that I've took, yes, I've taken anger management with my counselor. Yes, I've taken anger management with CareNet. The only one I haven't done is with Tim. All right. So like, let, me, let, me, let me back up. You, you've talked about anger management with your counselor, but you haven't taken an anger management course, correct? I have. I took it with CareNet. Okay. You, you had a video on anger management with CareNet. No, it was a, it was an online course, I do believe. It, was it a video? Yeah, it was a video. How long was the video? Like 24 minutes? Okay. But you and you have not completed a sanctioned anger management course at this time. I I guess yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I'll pass with you. Your Honor, if if I could, Marisol, if you don't know the answer to a question, just say I don't know. You don't you don't have to I, guess. Okay. I mean, I'll, I'll pass it with you, Your Honor. 
<clears throat> okay, let me, um, I, I want to address this. Um, obviously, it's not Ms. Garza's fault that she hasn't been able to do the course through Timmons. <clears throat> um, but have we gotten any kind of therapy notes from her counselor? Not at this time, Judge. Mr. Coble, do you feel like that that the the issue of anger management could be satisfactorily addressed through counseling? In other words, let's let's continue mom in with her counselor for a longer period of time, maybe than what we normally would, um, to address that issue and to deal with that. I mean, I would think that her counselor would be qualified to do that. I would assume that the counselor is um, is well enough versed in that topic. Um, you know, I, I would like to talk to the to Mrs. Rothwell and just make sure that she feels comfortable um, with serving in that role. Well, you know, it's it would be an ongoing thing and, and you know, it would be you know, I mean, my feeling would be we would we would make that a part of her service plan that she would continue through the duration of the case with the counselor. The counselor would need to be told that, you know, one of the main areas that needs to be focused on is that issue. Okay. Um, have we gotten into any kind of couples counseling yet? That is set to begin. I discussed that with Francisco and Marisol last Tuesday, and I have discussed that with Mrs. Rothwell that um, we would like you know, to proceed with some family counseling. And I believe they have met together once. All right. Judge, I would also like to add that, you know, placement has a say in you know, or should have a say in the visitation and what they're comfortable with. This is Marisol's grandparents and, you know, they're raising the children or they, they have the children placed with them. And, um, you know, they're, they're not here, but they, they should have a voice in how often, you know, Marisol is able to go over there. Well, Your Honor, I think that's what we asked for. I think that's what Francesco gets right now is that as long as it, he gets, as much visitation supervised by Marisol grandparents as he likes, as they permit. And that's all we're asking for from Marisol. We're not asking that, that, that she shows up at the door and they have to give her visitation. We're not asking for that at all. No, I understand. <clears throat> and judge, if I may, I don't, I obviously don't represent Marisol, but I think that Dale would agree with me that we've both been in this case three different times. And from the beginning of this until now, uh, Marisol has shown a lot different attitude and been a lot less combative even at the hearings than she was before. So, I mean, I think that she's made some progress. Just me saying that, obviously, I'm not any kind of professional, but just from looking at the outside in. I, I would agree 100 percent with that, Your Honor. So, <clears throat> you know, I'm, I mean, I, I think Troy Timmons is a great guy. I think he's a great counselor. I think he has good programs. You know, I'm, I, I, I stand behind you know, what he does. I'm, I'm just really thinking, you know, we've, we've got, we've got a family that they've got some transportation issues. They've, they've obviously got financial struggles. Um, you know, and, and, and this is not a new thing that, that I'm doing. I mean, I've done this in lots of my cases where I sometimes think the one stop shopping on um, with services is more effective. If she's developed a rapport with her counselor, I I really feel like, you know, and, and Mr. Coble, I mean, I'm going to kick this can to you to talk with the counselor about does she feel that she's qualified to address the anger management? And then I would I would prefer to modify her service plan to just say that she will do that through the counselor and, and that she will continue in counseling through the through the 
you know, duration of the rest of this case. And, you know, I think that would benefit both parents, quite frankly. And then and then we move into the couples counseling arena. Uh, so, you know, I I would I would I just think it's more effective in this particular situation. So I would like to, to know if the counselor is willing to do that. And if so, um, I would just allow Ms. Garza to do the anger management with her counselor instead of doing the class with Mr. Timmons, since we don't seem to have a date certain on when that's going to happen. Well, Judge, as far as the anger management with Troy Timmons, there is a set date. I gave that date to Marisol last Tuesday. She is registered for that class. But but certainly if the court wants that to be substituted by the uh, counseling with Mrs. Rothwell, that's that's up to the court. I feel like in this particular situation, if the counselor feels qualified to do it, personally, I think it will be more beneficial to Ms. Garza for this to be an ongoing progressive thing versus, you know, the one day kind of intense deal that we're, you know, we would get through Mr. Timmons. Not saying it's not a good class, but I just think, you know, you know, it's the same deal. If we've got a case where drugs are the big problem, what do we really focus on? Sobriety. And and that that's a something we look at over a period of time. Problem in this case, one of the big underlying problems in this case is her anger issues. So I would rather, you know, just keep hammering away at that. You know, let's just keep chipping away at that block for the rest of the time that we have in this case. So yes, but it's, I just think that it will be more effective. Um, <clears throat> okay, Ms. Mullinax, on behalf of your client. I'd briefly call Mr. Nahara. And Francisco, you've been present um, during this hearing when Mr. Koval testified. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. Um, Do you hear him testify or talk about um, how you had refused to drug test? Yes, ma'am. Um, were you, did you have the same problem yesterday as Marisol testified that she had yesterday with the drug testing? Yes, ma'am. Do you have any reason to... Um, to not drug screen. I mean, are you okay going today? No, nah, I don't mind going today. I'll go today. And you heard him say that you had altered your hair. Um, can you tell the court what's going on with that? Oh, I had uh, dyed my hair. Like the left side is like, I guess you could say blonde. And the right side is like black still. So I kind of painted it. I don't know Like if I could show it. Like, see? I don't know. <laughs> and did and did you do that to try to alter any drug screen results? No, ma'am. I just did that because, I mean, I wanted to paint my hair. I mean, that's it. And um, we all had a, a permanency conference a week or so ago you were, where you were there, correct? Yes, ma'am. I believe so. And do you recall me asking if you guys had ever heard of Job Corps? Yes, ma'am. And... Um, is it your, did it, did I kind of explain Job Corps at that meeting? Yes, ma'am, you did. All right. And um, were you agreeable to getting more information on Job Corps? Yes, ma'am. And is it correct that you contacted my office? You just haven't been able to have service, I guess, to talk to me more about it? Yes, ma'am. And are you still willing to get more information to see if you can get into that program so that helps with your case? Yes, ma'am. Um, and you guys are living in the same house that doesn't have any utilities. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. Are y'all having issues monetarily and getting work at this point? Yes, there's there's like no work around here. And when I was working, you know, I was out of work for almost two months. The incident that happened. And so with the hard time finding work, um, is that harming you being able to have the proper living conditions for your child children to be returned to you i mean as of right now yes and is there anything else other than us giving you information about job corps that you think would help you be able to complete the services that you're supposed to work no not really i'm just trying to really find a 
place where I can actually work at. Cause I don't feel like Memphis is a place to even have a job. Like I'm trying to at least go to like Childress or something like to work. There's at least work over there. And you heard Mr. Koval talk about how you had had some classes, some parenting classes to do and some other classes, I guess, that you had to finish before the parenting. Is that right? Yes, there were the gospel classes, but I, I finished two of those. And, and are, th- are those online or what? They're online, but you had to, you got to wait for them to send you it. And then after that, you do the classes and then you call them and then they like test you on it, I guess, like quiz you about it. And so are you having difficulties since you don't have Wi-Fi at this point in time getting those done? Yes, ma'am. I mean, I've still been here, like, in Memphis, just doing, like, odd jobs instead of trying to make money. So I haven't really been at the Wi-Fi. And it, it, other than that, I've been doing, like, a lot of counseling. I've, I've done, like, counseling almost, like, every week, almost. And we see the counselor about twice a week, three times a week, almost. And we talk to her almost every day. So, I mean, but I've been doing a lot of counseling. And are you seeing the same counselor as Marisol or somebody else? I'm seeing the same counselor. She comes here to Memphis to see us. I pass the witness, Your Honor. Um, Mr. Elby, any questions? No, Your Honor. Mr. Raby? No, Your Honor. All right. And uh, Ms. Stevens, any questions? No, No, Your Honor. All right. Um, anything further, Ms. Molnix? No, Your Honor. Rest. All right, then, Ms. Stevens, on behalf of uh, Ms. Seal. Uh, just that Ms. Seal told me that the kids are doing well. She's not aware of any issues that need to be addressed right this minute and that the placement is safe and should be continued. All right. Thank you. All right, and Casa. Yes, ma'am. Um, I have been out to see the girls. I'm going out again this week. Um, they're both doing really well. Irene has started school. Um, I don't think Juliana has started daycare yet, but I think that's in the works. But placement's great. Everything seems to be going well. They communicate with me really well, so I don't have any concerns there. Your Honor, may I say something really quickly, if I may? Yes, ma'am. I was wondering if my counselor can join the Zoom meeting right now and speak with you in person, like on the Zoom meeting. I have no objection to that, counselor. I'm not. Yes. Sure, I mean, I mean, we can ask her the questions we were going to ask. That'd be fine. Uh, she was she was wondering if um, how how would I be able to like how how can she join the meeting? Someone needs she, to send her the link. Yeah, does she have an email? I'll send her the I'll forward her the email with the link. As well. And that's probably the most efficient way, Your Honor. Okay. So, Ms. Ms. Rothwell, um, I'm Judge Baker. I appreciate you logging in. Um, we've we've had a, quite a bit of discussion this morning uh, about the parents' uh, progress. Uh, with services, um, they seem to have, uh, you know, formed a good rapport with you, um, and, and, and it it seems like you are have sort of become a good support system for them. Um, are they progressing in just just generally? Are they making progress in their individual counseling with you? Yes, ma'am, they are. All right. Have you started any kind of couples counseling with them yet? We have uh, we've done couples counseling on and off uh, with the with the last set of instructions I received from St. Francis. I understand that couples counseling is more of a uh, they want more of that done. So we will begin working on that more and more. Okay. so the other big component that we have in this case is is anger management. And, and in particular with uh, Ms. Garza. Um, that's kind of what got us here. Yes, ma'am. Um, do you feel, and she's had some difficulty because of cancellation of, of Troy Timmons' anger management class, but do you feel uh, comfortable and qualified to essentially take over that task of 
working with mom on anger management? Yes. Yes, I definitely do. All right. My my opinion is I think I think that would be way more beneficial for mom to have that ongoing discussion and, you know, and putting those things into practice uh, through the through the rest of this case. Um, than her attending the one day class with Mr. Timmons. I, I, it's a good class. I'm not. I'm not dishing on Mr. Timmons' class. I just think you know that the anger management and the outbursts and that that lack of control. You know, that's really what got us here, and right. so I I just feel like it might be more beneficial to address that over a longer term basis. Okay, and uh, and I'm I'm on board for however long they need me. Okay, I, I I am going to to make an, an order today that will require both parents to continue in counseling with Ms. Rothwell, be it individual, be it parenting, I mean, excuse me, be it couples counseling and or with mom in particular, you know, anger management. However, that mix, whatever that looks like, but as as um you know, we, we normally want six, six sessions and or until a counselor releases. But, you know, my personal feeling is that that parents will benefit greatly by uh, continuing that relationship with you yes, through, ma'am. The, through the pendency of the case. So so I am going to make that part of my order today that they will continue in engaging in counseling with you through the pendency of the case. All right. Um, that will alleviate mom's requirement of attending the anger management class through Mr. Timmons. So that can be removed from her service plan since we'll be addressing that one-on-one with Ms. Rothwell. Um, Ms. Rothwell, is there anything else that you would like to share with us today about parents or their and or their progress? Uh, I will say that Both Francisco and Marisol are truly committed to making better choices, and they have worked hard at improving their things. They have faced a lot of adversity together, and they've overcome a lot of adversity together. and uh, And I've seen improve, and I see improvements in them every every time I see them. I see them improvements in them, even though. Life's not always easy. They are still moving, trying to move forward and do and be and get their girls back and and be a family again. Okay, that's what we want to see. Um, okay. So I, I just I want to just tell Ms. Garza and Mr. Nahara, you know, you do still have other things that you've got to do. And in some of those are things that Ms. Rothwell can't help you with. Um, You all are going to have to get something figured out as far as steady employment and suitable housing, not only for yourselves, but then ultimately for the children. So Ms. Garza, Mr. Nahara, if you all will unmute, thank you. you. You understand I can't send children to a home where there's no working utilities. Yes, ma'am. We just, it's just, when, when this first case took, took part, we kind of felt like we really wanted our daughters back. So we were like, we can't be in a trailer. So we were just trying to get a step, you know, ahead and feel better about the situation of what was all going on. And then when we got a house, you know, it made us feel a lot better, but then it was just like really difficult for us to even just to turn on the bills, like let alone. So it was with the the retailer, he was talking about like he was going to sell the house and he didn't know what to do with it because he ended up getting in some divorce with his wife. So it was kind of very difficult for with him telling us that he was going to sell it and he wasn't going to sell it. So now we're just like, we're just trying to take it a step at a time, Your Honor, and and really, and really just, we here in Memphis is really just seasonal jobs and we we're really looking for a full-time job and like like I kept all the like I guess application where I uh, applied and I 
called them and they never even gave me a shot or anything. I still have messages of me over here trying to apply at the nursing home and everything. And it, it, it's just not working out for us to be here in Memphis. It's really difficult. Have you given some thought to trying to relocate to Childress? Yes, ma'am. I have just because of there's full time employment. And I know, I know me and him, we can make it there. I mean, like, I know, I, I just really see it, see it, like, see it being good for us there. I really do. But well, it's just like, if it's like anywhere else right now, there are help wanted signs out everywhere. So, I, I mean, if employment is holding you all back in, in Memphis, you know, I, I would encourage you to relocate where you can have full time steady employment and, and a paycheck. Because you guys, you know, here's here's the big concern is y'all are running out of time. We're set for a final in this case, January 11th. And I know that may sound like it's a long way away, but it's not. And And you've got lots of things you've got to get in place before that. Yes, ma'am. Now, there are sometimes circumstances where I can find reason to extend your case in an additional six months. But, but I'm just telling you the law is we are supposed to start and finish this in 12 months. Yes, ma'am. And, and it requires what we call extraordinary circumstances for me to extend the case. And so I, I just want you all to understand and be mindful of the fact that you've only got so much time to, to get this stuff done and to get that kind of stability in place for your kiddos. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I just want to make sure you all know that. Yeah. I'm going to, I am going to order you all to go drug test today. Uh, here in UA, you need to do that. Mr. Covell, you said that appointment was at four o'clock. Yes, Judge. Okay. So you all need to be there. If for some reason you're going to have a transportation problem, you need to let Mr. Covell know right away. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I am going to order you all not to alter your hair any further during the pendency of the case. And I'm going to order you to continue in the counseling for the duration of the case, as we've already talked about, and to engage in couples counseling, as Ms. Rothwell thinks you're ready to do. Um, I'll continue the department as temporary managing conservator and continue children's placement. Um, and, and I am making a finding that it, it would be a danger to return the children home at this point in time because we don't have that kind of stability for the children. Um, and, and I apologize. I, I wanted to ask CASA if there was anything else CASA wanted to add. And let me just stop right here and, and just ask real quick. No, oh, ma'am. That, that was everything. Okay. Thank you. Um, with respect to mom's visitation, I am going to modify our visitation and allow mom to have the same kind of access to the children as the father, because I assume that they probably will do most of that together. Um, so, but placement is, you know, placement has the right to say, no, it's not convenient. This isn't a good time or, you know, you're overwhelming us. So, you know, I, I would want them to have, I think at this stage of things, I'd like for them to have, you know, a minimum of four hours a week contact with the children. If, if placement can, can make that work. If placement's good with them having more than that, that's fine. Awesome. Yes, ma'am. But, um, uh, you, but, but, you know, you know, Miss Garza and Mr. Nahari, you gotta follow their rules. Oh yes, most definitely. That's that's their home, that's their house, and I'm more respectful for what they have because I know they have a lot going on right now. They really do. But um I know my grandmother and my grandpa, they're gonna they're they're gonna be more than happy to hear what you said. They really are. 
my hope is that the time that you are there and with the children, that you will, quite frankly, give them a break and take some of the load off of them. And, you know, you, you guys are the parents and, you know, you are taking care of the children's needs while you are with them. They're there to supervise, but, but, you know, I, I would like to think that this would be helpful to them. It will so, most definitely. Man. All right. Um, anybody have any questions? Okay. As stated earlier, our final is scheduled for January 11th of 2024. That's at 11 o'clock. At least that docket's at 11 and maybe the only thing that we've got going that day. I'm not sure. Um, I appreciate everybody and uh, just parents. I, I encourage you again, look hard at what's going to help you all achieve stability, housing and jobs. Yes, ma'am. Because you yes, can't have stability unless you have both those things. All right. I'll see you guys back in January. Um, again, Ms. Rothwell, thank you very much for jumping in. I appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Everybody have a good rest of your day. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Mm -hmm.